Hello, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra. Today we're having another lesson on Docker and specifically the basics of the run command. So to get started, the, the run command is in this format, docker run. Um, any arguments that I want to pass to the run command, an image and a tag for that image if necessary, and then the command we want to execute in the container followed by the arguments for that container, for that command. For instance, uh, I can say docker run, I'm going to pass in dash it real quick. I'm going to execute a busy box image, which is a, a small, tiny distribution of Linux. I'm just going to execute the shell command. That puts me into a shell prompt here. And of course, I can do whatever I want and exit out. Now, the docker ps command shows us our containers. Right now, I don't have any containers running. And but when I execute uh, ps docker ps a, it shows me all containers, even if they're not running. It's important to remember that when we execute the run command, we the run command will create a new container and execute a command within that container. That container container will remain until it has been explicitly deleted. Now I can restart a container. I can attach to that container and now I'm back into my busybox shell where I was before. So a container can be started, it can be stopped, it can be reattached to, you can be killed, but there's one thing that we can't do which is important to recognize which is I cannot change the command that has been executed. So once you have created a container, it has a command associated with it, and that command is what will always get run when you restart it. So I can restart and reattach to this because it has a shell command. But if I'm running something else, like like an echo command, I can say echo hello I have now created a docker container which all it does is echo hello so it echoed hello it exited but I still have the container lying around I can remove it with the R and, and even if I restart it well because it runs in the background I don't see any of the output all it did is echo hello again but I can remove this container using the dash uh, uh, the rm command along with the container ID. And now it has been removed from my list of containers. I'm going to remove the first one we had in here as well. So let's go over some of these arguments I've been passing in. Docker run dash it. This is an interactive, it means to have interactive terminal or interactive standard in, maps the standard in of the host to the container. And the T does the pseudo uh, TTY console terminal. So if I run without the T, just run interactive, and run the shell command, you'll notice I don't have anything. It's not showing me my console, but I can still execute commands. I can still go into the home directory, but I'm not getting a whole lot of output from the actual terminal. I only get output from the commands I execute. So that's kind of not very useful. And if I just do a dash T, what will happen is I'll get my I will get my terminal console 
but it doesn't do anything because I haven't mapped standard into the container standard in. I can't execute anything because it won't read what I am passing into it. And you'll notice because of that, I have this container which is now running and I can't interact with it because I haven't mapped standard in. So I'm just going to kill it and it will be done. And then I'm going to remove quick little command here. If I want to remove all of my containers, I can do a docker ps-aq, which will only give us the container IDs for all of them. Pass that into docker rm and it removes all of my containers. The next thing is I don't want to keep executing RM on every one of these to remove them. So I can pass it in as a flag. Say busy box. So docker run it, remove it, and then we're going to do busy box shell. I go high, exit, and you'll notice that I have no container. By passing in the, R, the dash dash rm, it automatically deleted the container once the container had exited. So I can run a quick container to do a echo hello world. And it won't stay around for ever. Oops. Now we need to get some more, more useful commands because this doesn't do a whole lot for us right now. It just basically allows us to go into a terminal and execute commands. But let's say I want to share files between the host and the, and the container. Well, that's where we have a, a dash V parameter. And this passes in, uh, there's two methods to use it. We're only talk about one today and we'll talk about the other way later, which is a probably a better way to use it but I'm going to pass in my present working directory so I can pass it in as home manually typing it in home dark zebra commands and map it to slash dark zebra and what this will do is it will map the host directory here on the left to the host directory, the container directory on the right. If either of these directories do not exist, then they will be created automatically. So the host directory, if it doesn't exist, will be created, and the container directory, if it does not exist, will be created. So I'm going to execute the shell and busybox, and you'll notice I now have a dark zebra folder. If I go into that folder, and I just create a, a file called hello world.txt and exit. Because that was my current working directory, it added it into my folder here. Uh, if we look at our permissions, you'll notice that this has been created with root user permissions. Uh, that's one of the problems with volume. You gotta be careful that your, your permissions don't get messed up. There is a way to get around that. That is by passing in the dash u parameter. The dash u parameter, I can pass in a user ID and group ID and execute the exact same command. Now when I go in dark zebra and touch hello world, and exit, of course, the, the command shell. It has been mapped to the dark zebra user, which is a user ID of a thousand. That way I can make sure that my permissions, that the ownership of the file remains the same. But it can also create other issues on the container if it doesn't know, has problems with the user. So just keep in mind, that sometimes you can have permissions users when you're mounting volumes this way. The next item we're going to talk about in the run command is, is the port argument. If I'm going to run 
a something like a web server, for instance, Nginx, Nginx exposes port 80 and it uh, serves web content through port 80. And so I can tell Docker when I run this image that I want to map port 80 to some port on the host. Uh, I'm going to run this in detached mode, which means it will just background it as soon as I run it and keep it running in the background. And actually, I don't need the IT, I just need the dash D, dash P80. I'm going to run Nginx. And because Nginx has a command already built into the image, I don't need to specify uh, another one. Now I'll hit enter. Now, if I go Docker PS. Right over here under ports, we can see that Docker has mapped port 49160 to port 80 on the container. So the local port 49160 will go to the Nginx uh, port 80 on the container. So now if I change this to go to 49160 port, I will get the default Nginx page. That's very handy. I can run multiple web servers in different ports and it's automatically assigned which port uh, they will use. But if I want to specify exactly which port, I can do that as soon as I remove the old one here. I can do that by specifying which local one, let's say 8000, to run on port 80. So the left hand side is the local post, the local port, and the right hand side is the container port. Once again, I can just run nginx in detached mode. I need to run it. And now if we go into port 8000, once again we have it. And if we go back to port 49160, this will now be broken. Because that port is no longer mapped. And you can always see which ports are mapped. You can map more than one port by specifying more than one dash P argument. So for Nginx, we could also pass in uh, a port for 443, which is encrypted SSL web traffic. And one other thing is that we need to pass in environmental variables occasionally. And so we have the dash E, and so I can say my secret, which is no longer a secret, so I'm going to say equals no secret. So what this is going to do is create an environmental variable on the machine, on the container, called my secret automatically. And if I echo, I go into BusyBox and echo my secret, it will say no secret. What this is useful for is if I need to pass in parameters for database connections, passwords, all, all kinds of environmental variables that might be need, I can pass in to my container automatically. So let's do a, a couple of quick examples on some uh, new things to do. I don't have any images right now, so we're going to go into, first of all, I, I pulled down the HTML5 boilerplate code, and I just want to run a simple static web server using Nginx. And I, I just want to have this, for whatever reason, this HTML boilerplate as my website. So I dock, I can run docker. I don't need it to be interactive or have a terminal. I just need it to be detached as a web server. I need to map my port. So I'm going to say port 80 on the host to port 80 on the container. And I'm going to run nginx. Hit enter. Oh, actually I'm not going to yet. I also need to map the actual code to the volume on the container. So I'm going to pass in the present working directory, the output from that command, and in this nginx image, the web, the web files or the HTML files are located in user local nginx HTML. 
So it will take the current directory I'm in and put it in the user local nginx html directory. If that directory already exists, it will be over, it will be replaced with the directory uh, from the host. In our case, present working directory directory. And I'm gonna run nginx. There's my container ID. And if I pass this in on port 80 now on my machine, I have an HTML5 boilerplate page. So there's a very simple way to start up a static HTML um, host, Nginx. <clears throat> also, I do not have Go on this host computer. But right here, I have some Go language code. Go is a, a programming language developed by Google that compiles down to a binary file. I want to compile this even though I don't have Go on my machine, but I do have a Golang Docker image. And so I can map the current working directory to the Go directory on the container. And the, the Go language image has a Go directory that automatically will run compiling on when you map it there. So I'm mapping present directory to there. And I'm going to, I want to make sure that my user remains the same. So I'm going to make sure that my user ID and group ID stay the same. I'm going to execute the Golang image, the latest version of it. And I'm just going to go go build. That's going to uh, compile our file. And I want to have a dash O that says hello world.out. So it's going to output hello world.out binary file. Executed. And now I have an executable here. And because it's been compiled, I can execute that even though I don't have the Go language on this host. So that's really useful if I need to compile things when I don't have libraries or I don't have programs maybe on my machine and I don't want to. If I have deprecated or old libraries or different versions, I don't want to install and overwrite the ones on my host machine. Uh, I can use a Docker image to do that. So it's very useful both for designing uh, by, by mapping a directory to a web server, I can change designs and, and tweak HTML. Or, on the other hand, I can use it to compile um, something in, in an environment that, I'm, that may not match the environment that I'm working in. This is just really the, the simple basics of using Docker in a day-to-day -day, uh, work environment. So. Real quick, you'll notice that Hello World is now owned by Dark Zebra, so no problems there. I hope you're getting being able to see like how useful and how powerful this can be. Uh, so uh, we'll have some more videos soon on how to do more things in terms of server side. And thanks for watching this video. Please leave a comment or a question if you have any in the comment section. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.